Hi, I'm Myra. And I'm Tressa. We are fancy marketing people with Union, a Wyoming-based telecommunications company. Yes, Wyoming really does exist. We proudly serve the Rocky Mountain region. On this podcast, we will feature businesses, organizations, nonprofits, and influential people from Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming. Our mission is to highlight those who inspire their communities daily. We believe this makes us truly authentic because a journey of a thousand miles always begins with a single step. Three, two, one. Baby clap. Baby clap. (laughs) Good morning, Tressa. Good morning, Myra. Yeah, I like your... So those in listener land, before we start our episodes, um, Tressa gets to be the human... Like clapper, I don't know how that sounds what terrible. Is, what is that called? What in is movies? that called? Uh, uh, is the it a action? Cue? I don't know. The cue? What is it? Uh, Tell us key. Slate. The slate. 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 Yeah. Oh, we're slating. Okay. We're slating. Yeah. Yeah. So Tressa gets to be the human one. And you so, know, I do baby clap. Yeah. Two, one. <laughs> I like the sound effect. <laughs> do they still have those? Like the black and white. We should get one. Yeah, no. Right on. No, you gotta keep. You gotta keep the. Ee, ee. Yeah. <laughs> it is entertaining. Yeah, it is. I like it. Express we're, conversation. We're easily entertained. Yeah, by you and I, so. It might only be entertaining to us. So I'm not sure, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, I was just thinking, this time last year is when we started the podcast, and um. Yeah. It was a lot more snow. (laughs) Yeah. This time last year uh, was like around Easter. Yeah. And I was talking about the Easter egg hunt. Oh, that's right. In the snow. Yeah. And it was like, uh, you know, Armageddon, but the snow version for children and Easter eggs. Yeah. The is Easter. When is like next weekend? Yeah. Yeah. It's coming up fast. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, but this time of year is also uh, March Madness. Yes. I'm a fan. I know. I know. I don't know much what's going on with basketball, but. Yeah, I like basketball. Yeah. That's where my loyalties lie, you know. So I, I assume that your team, North Carolina, is in. They are in the tournament. Yeah. Yep. So do they have like a position in the tournament? They do. I know there's a bracket. They are positioned yeah. in the tournament. Yes. So where's that? They are the number one seed in the West. Oh, yep. Dangerous. Yep. So we're Protecting stop. the number yeah. one seed. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going, and that's where I stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, do you predict they'll win it all? Um, every year I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't even honestly. Uh huh. Like, you really think so? I hope so. Yeah. There is a theory out there. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm terrible with this. I move a lot. Um, there's a theory out there um, that when we don't win the ACC tournament, we win the national championship. It's happened actually a couple times, and we just lost the ACC tournament. Oh, I um, could watch that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I shout out to State. I'm happy for them because they, have, they hadn't won a – ACC championship since like 1986 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so North Carolina State, State beat the Tar yeah. Heels. Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good we're good with naming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real good with naming. <laughs> there's North Carolina State. Then there's University of North Carolina. I know it's hard to keep track of them. Yeah, there's like I think 12 state schools. Yeah, I might have messed that up, but um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. So do you do a bracket? Do you fill one out? No, no, <laughs> not really. I just, I mean, my victory is always, I just always put the Tar Heels in yeah. the win at all. That's yeah. just what I do. So, so who are the other uh, top seeds in the other? Oh gosh. So we've got North Carolina oh. in the, would in you the say West. the West? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Purdue is okay. one of them. Okay. I hope, I hope I'm not wrong. Um, and then I think. Houston. Oh, Houston. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Uh, He's Houston, back here helping and us. then uh, the one, UConn. the Yukon. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yukon. Yeah, I don't like okay. them. You don't like them. They're a coach. Mm-mm, not a fan. Oh, I. You got some feelings about I this. I do have feelings <laughs> about this. Uh, he stresses me out really bad. 
I don't know. Um, there's just some coaches out there. Yeah. And I love sports very much, but I'm very much also a person who's observant. And um, typically I pay attention to all the marketing that happens uh, and branding during the tournaments, right. uh, whether it's basketball, football, professional, collegiate, you name it, because that's just my brain. Yeah. Um, I'm branding and marketing at heart. That's just who I am. And so I notice lots of things that are very irrelevant to the sport, um, like how a coach reacts or how what the players do, what shoes the players are wearing, um, what the people on the bench are doing. Uh, but it also helps me with, like, especially during Carolina games because I have a lot of anxiety. Yeah. And um, as I've gotten older, I kind of don't watch the games. I just walk out of the room. It gives it, you too much stress. It gives me too yeah. much stress. And I wish I could put that much energy into something else because <laughs> – yeah. I could probably move a mountain um, <laughs> with how much stress I have while watching the Tar Heels. Well, I hope one day you can relax and enjoy it, regardless of the outcome. That's the whole point. It's difficult. Yeah. It's You'll difficult. get there. It's yeah. Um, I'm really, that's something I'm looking forward to is I really want to take uh, Blake and the kids to a game yeah. because there is nothing in this world. I, I like believe that. I'm a that coming. Environment. I'm, I You've got to be it. I want to invite. Yeah, seriously, yeah, there wanna, is just. I want to do that. I'd love to. Um, I love Laramie, and I've really come to love the Cowboys, and I've had the privilege of going to many games, and um, it's an, definitely an experience to do that. It is a whole nother world when it's that kind of environment, yeah. and when the whole stadium is packed to the brim, and the energy. The synergy. Yeah, you know? I'm sure. <laughs> you yeah, know, you can feel it through the TV. You can feel it. It's the, crazy. Yeah. yeah. So um, I've been to a lot of Duke Carolina games, and um, those are very hard to watch in person because you can't hide. Yeah. You can't, like, go hide your face <laughs> or you can't, you know, like, go run away and go get a snack in private. Because the way my kitchen's set up, um, I have, like, a window above my sink, but – uh, you can actually look through another window into the back and of the house and see the TV. <laughs> so I'll go in the kitchen and watch through a window, through another window. To With see your the piece TV. of cheese. Yeah, I'm just hiding. I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah. my whole family is like this, too. Yeah. When it comes to the Tar Heels. So I get it. I get it. Yeah. We are very much. It's, this, it's Tar Heel born, Tar Heel bred, Tar Heel dead. <laughs> so we're born, bred, dead. We are those people. Yeah. Well, you heard it here. I get it join you at one of those games eventually yeah it's a party okay deal <laughs> yeah we're yeah it's way cooler than what happens at duke so well yeah yeah they're just yeah. irrelevant yeah if duke loses we all win that's <laughs> i agree with that i'm not a duke fan myself <laughs> yeah well um cool so our guest today um, is john contos he is the general chairman and chief operating officer of shine frontier days Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Thank you. Do you have a team for during the tournament, or do you care? You know, um, I, I I don't follow uh, college basketball real close. Uh, I know my wife is is uh, was is into Caitlin Clark and the uh, oh the, cool yeah and, and Iowa yeah. Um, you know, she's. I, I'll tell you what the the athletic levels of these teams anymore are just mind-blowing mm -hmm. uh un unbelievable athleticism um so yeah they're you know when we do watch they are fun to watch yeah yeah caitlin clark i mean she's just amazing i'm not that into oh. basketball either but i've watched you know several who she is games. yeah yeah you yeah. know who she is <laughs> yeah i that's yeah. cool that you brought her up because, um, like, I think she's just doing a lot for the women's basketball and um, women in sports in general and um, bringing a lot of attention to that, you know, sport. And um, I, I'm curious to see the views of the tournament for um, the women's yeah. league this year. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. So. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Well – off of basketball <laughs> and back to Cheyenne Frontier Days. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do for Cheyenne Frontier Days, how long you've been doing it? Just give us a little background. 
Sure. Um, so uh, obviously, volunteer. Uh, this I'm going into my 42nd year with Cheyenne Frontier Days. Um, I started 1983 as wow. a parade volunteer. Um, served three years on the parade committee. Moved to the uh, public relations committee as a volunteer. Um, kind of went up through the ranks of that committee. Uh, eventually became public relations chairman in uh, 2005, six, and seven. Uh, I spent six years on the board of directors with Cheyenne Frontier Days, uh, was uh, the chairman in 2018, and uh, then I was asked to do this. So uh, I guess the rest is history. Um, the general chairman position is a, is a, uh, uh, a huge position, as, as I said, chief, chief operating officer. So uh, anything that has to do with operations is, is, is me. Um, uh, whether it's asphalt, gravel, uh, arena, buildings, you name it, operations, it, 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 it's me. So our structure is, uh, the way we're set up is I oversee our, our nine committee chairman. We have nine individual committees on the park uh, and nine individual chairmen that oversee those committees. I, and I, I oversee uh, that, that whole process. Um, so it's, uh, it, 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 it's humbling. Um, it's a pleasure to do that, to do, it, but it's uh, it's busy, uh, very busy, as you can imagine. Well, you talked a lot about um, volunteering, and this is something that when I took the position here at Union, and I was introduced to, because um, I'm 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 from out of state, so when I took the role here at Union, I wasn't really familiar with Shine Frontier Days at the time, um, but the number one thing that I was told um, was about the volunteers and that the volunteers um, are more than, the word volunteer doesn't even hold a candle to what that group of people really do for the organization. And I was told to treat them with the most um, respect out of anybody that I come in contact with, um, just because when you really dive into what volunteers really, like what they do and the level, I mean, really they're kind of, to me, I think they're held to one of the highest pedestals. Um, could you talk about like what it really means to be a volunteer and what that looks like? Well, I uh, and 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 I would agree with you. We do hold our volunteers at the highest pedestal. Um, you know, volunteering in Cheyenne, uh, we have three thousand volunteers, give or take. I mean, they are the heart and soul of this organization. They are. They put this this thing on. We have twenty paid staff. And I always have to give credit to our staff. Uh, you know, 20 people uh, along with our volunteers uh, put this production on year in and year out for 128 years. So it, it really is a re remarkable thing. Uh, you know, there's there's nothing our volunteers won't do to make this thing uh, happen year in and year out, to make it successful. Uh, even, even short notice drop of the hat, uh, you know, uh, as you can imagine the size of production this is, uh, and, you know, within our nine committees, uh, obviously they serve uh, on our nine committees, but, uh, you know, we have a committee that has 600 people. We have a committee that has 60 people, um, but not, not one of those is any more important than anybody else. Uh, everybody has a job to do. Everybody have, has a task or tasks to accomplish and year in and year out it happens. Uh, so again, I, you know, I, I, I'm with you. I can't say enough. And I can't give enough praise to our volunteers. Uh, they they are the heart and soul of this organization, and they make it happen year in and year out. It's remarkable. Yeah, that is remarkable. Yeah. Um, so you said that you've been with the organization for over 40 years. Um, most volunteers that I know have been volunteers for like 20 to 30 years. And that's something that I, I think people don't understand mm -hmm. either. You know, this is um, – there is so much love poured into um, this rodeo, this event um, that makes these people fly in from all over the country. Even if they've lived here at one point in the state and they've moved out of the state, they still take time and come back for two weeks straight um, to dedicate their time. And they've been doing it for 20 to 30 years. Um, that is just something that blew me away when I first um took on this role and started understanding the event and really what goes into it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's and, crazy. They'll take their personal vacation time 
and come and volunteer. I, I've met many, many volunteers like that at CFD. It, it blew me away to, to know that. And, and, you know, as, as, as we continue to evolve, I mean, you know, uh, uh, you're exactly right. Everything you you've said is, is a hundred percent true. Uh, what, what makes these people take two or three weeks off of work, uh, whether it's local, whether, whether they, they, uh, they live somewhere else, uh, you know, I'll tell you the, the, the technology world has helped us out a lot with zoom and, and teams and all. Now these people can be part of the monthly you know, uh, individual committee meetings and or whatever. But, uh, you know, when we, as, as, as I travel and visit, uh, visit other rodeos and, and meet with their leadership and so on and so forth, uh, you know, that, that is always a question. How do you get these people to volunteer all their time and their efforts in and you're out and, and not take a dime for it, um, to, to, to make this happen. And, uh, it's the million dollar question. I, I don't think there's a, a right answer uh, to that, but I will say um, uh, we uh, we had a long time community leader servant uh, by the name of Bill Dubois that was active and heavily involved in Frontier Days for years and years and years. And, and I think Bill said it best, it's a very short statement, but he said volunteering in Cheyenne is the Cheyenne thing to do. And th I that's the that. best answer we have. That's wonderful. You know? I love that. So you were saying Cheyenne Frontier Days has been around for 128 years. Did I hear that correctly? That's correct. Wow. Uh, this, is our one this is our 128th. And uh, as you talk about women's athletics and women's sports and so on, uh, this year uh, the 128th is dedicated to the Year of the Cow. Oh, um, I love that. And so yeah. that that all that all plays plays in and and plays together. And again, it, it's highlighting, um, you know, uh, the the women's contributions to Cheyenne Frontier Days to the sport of rodeo. I mean, you watch these uh, these women uh, rodeo athletes; they are absolutely phenomenal. I mean, their their skill and their dedication is is completely unsurpassed um you know again they uh so we 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 saw it fit this year to uh dedicate the 128th to the year of the cowgirl and uh, uh we're actually going to put up a statue uh, oh. out at frontier park uh dedicate a uh, uh, statue of a cowgirl dedicating uh it to the year of the cowgirl oh, that's so that. cool collect pins for me yes i'll, I'll try to remember Please. yeah <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I literally ha I, I literally have some sitting right over here, oh. um, but uh, wh whatever you need, just let me know. Yeah, mail me some <laughs> <laughs> because that's something too. Yeah, uh, I've kept mine yeah for the few year three years now. Yeah, yeah. So I've this attended. would have been my fourth yeah. year. Um, I'm hoping to come back in a visiting um, place, but I literally have all my pins from every year mm -hmm. and that's something too that I think is really cool about being a sponsor and um, you walk around the park and all the volunteers they either have they have all the new pins some of the uh, dignitaries uh, county commissioners they have their little pins and um, the different forms of awareness, um, different organizations bring their pins like the the pins are the coolest thing and I'm talking about for those who've like what do you mean by pens like the the kind that you stick into your clothes yeah. <laughs> like a pendant yeah. I don't know yeah. and yeah. so yeah your lanyards are all decked out with all your pins and so I've kept all mine and I keep the same lanyard and just keep adding my pins yeah to my lanyards too. yeah well, as you can as, as you can imagine I've kept mine too oh I'm and, sure you have so got, many I, I, yeah I've got a gob of them uh, but again you know um so you know just a little bit back to the involvement of, of Frontier Days. Uh, you know, I, uh, a, as I started, um, you know, I was born and raised here. My, my family, uh, my family lived here. My father was, was, uh, became very involved in Frontier Days. And, uh, you know, I, I, I used to ask him back, you know, back in the day, I'd say, you know, pop, you know, I mean, why do you do this? And he said, uh, well, he said, you either get involved or you get out of town. He says, I he like says that. you go on vacation because he said Cheyenne, he, he's the city of Cheyenne, 
is frontier days from start to finish during those 10 days. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's cool. how I, you know, so that's how I, I uh, uh, began to get involved uh, and so on and so forth. You know, again, um, one thing that I can say uh, about our volunteers and about our leadership is, you know, every one of us has to be out there for one reason. And that reason is solely to make this thing happen year in and year out, no matter what we have to do. Uh, again, uh, I tell our committee, uh, I tell, you know, I tell our volunteers in, in, in different volunteer meetings, there's one reason to be here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not, it's not for us. It's to put this thing on year in and year out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the significance of CFD to the community, not only Cheyenne, but the entire region, like what you're bringing into the state of Wyoming? Uh, yeah. How about if I talk about the significance of CFD sure. nationwide? Yeah, um, please do. You know, it, it's a, it is amazing. Um, so back to the pins, you know, you get on an airplane and uh, actually uh, we just got back from Houston uh, not, not long ago and uh, boarded the airplane. And usually we, you know, we'll give, give the, the flight attendants and so on, you know, a pin or whatever. Um, but there's never been a time when we're in the, in an airport, uh, a group of people where somebody, I mean, random, somebody doesn't come up and say, uh, you're shy in frontier days. Right. And we said, yeah, we are. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have one of those, one of those pins, which I mean, just completely random. It's yeah, we do, you know, and so, uh, you know, we give out a lot of those and, and it is, it is a memento and it is a keepsake. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the economic piece of Shine Frontier Days. Um, so we, we do an economic impact every, every three years. Our last economic impact was, uh, I, I think, I believe a couple of years ago, uh, $40 million, wow. $40 million wow. to the Cheyenne, Laramie County and state of Wyoming, uh, economy. Uh, that's nothing to sneeze at. And we, and we realized that really realized that the year of COVID when that mm -hmm. didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, we, our local, our, our local business people, uh, you know, uh, uh, our, our tourism, all, all that is, you know, such a, such a part of this. And, and the cool part about that economic impact is the reason Frontier Day started 128 years ago was for the economic impact to Cheyenne, Laramie County, and the state of Wyoming, and it's the same today. That has never changed. Um, so, is is it important to make sure this thing happens year in and year out? Absolutely, and and to whatever aspect. Um, so, it uh, that that I I really think that's a cool piece that that has that has stayed and maintained for 128 years. So, uh, it is it is a big deal. Um, you know, I. I tell our committee, uh, our, our committee chairman and our leadership and our staff, and I said, you know, there, uh, Cheyenne, what Cheyenne Frontier Days means to our locals, our state and or whatever uh, means, it, well, it's again, the largest outdoor rodeo and Western celebration in the world. It's, it's the most historic. We have the most historic arena. We have the largest arena. All that plays into, plays into this, this uh, uh, ambiance uh, of Cheyenne Frontier Days. So the the uh, the economic impact, by all means, and and, and our our, uh, our local businesses and, and so on. You know, there the, what Cheyenne Frontier Days does for them uh, is is huge. Uh, they, you know, they're not part of the they're not part of the politics and the you know how we put it on and or whatever. It, but it's what 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 we do for that, for, for that individual business or those businesses. Let's talk about sponsors, if I may, for just a little yeah, bit, yeah, um, please. you know, this, this, this could not happen. This could not happen with our sponsors. So, uh, our sponsors are equally as important. Um, uh, our sponsors, uh, without sponsorship, we, we couldn't do what we did. Uh, we, we, you know, our sponsors support this. We cherish our sponsors. We value our sponsors. Uh, we enter, entertain our sponsors to the uh, utmost that that we're capable of. Uh, so, it, it, you know, and I know uh, sponsorships important everywhere, but in an event like this, uh, we we absolutely couldn't do it without uh, without our sponsors. Uh, 
So are they are they a cherished part of this? <laughs> yeah, by all means. Yeah. yeah, I know Union is really proud to have been a sponsor for many, many years. And um, I know now we're um, Platinum Arrowhead, which is one of the top sponsors of the event. Um, and that's something mm-hmm. that I know Union takes a lot of pride in. Um, and it's something that you cannot you cannot not be a part of, uh, you know, it's, the, it's just who we are too, you know? Yeah. I mean, we're a Wyoming based company, right? Family owned 110 years this year. You know, how can we not be a part of something to your point that brings that kind of money into the state, the awareness of the state, such a well-known event. We're really proud to be, uh, uh in partnership with Cheyenne Frontier Days, and I think that partnership will continue for many, many years to come. Um, so we, we look forward to it every year. Um, and we love the, the friendships we've built and the community that we've built between Union and the, C- and the people at CFD that we work with. We've become friends and family. Mm-hmm. It's been awesome. Well, is, isn't that funny how that happens? And, and again, um, you know, we, we cherish the same, the, the same thoughts and the same aspects. Um, and, you know, uh, we have different level, levels of sponsorship. Um, you know, er, every one of our sponsors is, is, is critical. Every one of our sponsors is, is, is special and premier. And, and you know, we, we, we hope to uh, keep those relationships and harbor those relationships. Because, like you said, you know, you start, you, it, it starts out as a sponsorship, as a business, and it switches to a friend thing fairly quick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're, they're, I, they're again, uh, just like our volunteers, I don't think there's anything that we couldn't do or ask our sponsors to help us with. Um, just because again, um, it takes so, so many aspects of everything to put, to make this thing happen. I mean, it just doesn't, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, and you know, you talk about the volunteering and so on, um, you know, aside from, uh, our, our, volunteers that fly into town uh, or whatever, you know, this is a year round deal anymore. If you, you know, we start, our committee start meeting again uh, as soon as October. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I mean, my world. uh, So, you know, our, our uh, leadership structure, uh, Tom Hersig is our CEO. um, And so uh, Tom is the CEO. I'm the COO. We have a CFO. Um, so Tom is the business end and I'm, I'm the operations end. Uh, I, I probably spend more time with Tom, uh, certain times throughout the year than I spend with life. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it, and so pe- people, people ask me, uh, wh- when do you start for the, for the next year? Uh, literally, uh, all joking aside, August 5th. Uh, so, uh, you know, our, our, our leadership structure, our committee structure, you serve three years uh, as a committee chairman or a general chairman, and then then you you roll out. So we have we have those positions staggered. So every year we'll you know we'll have two outgoing chairmen or three outgoing chairmen. Um, so uh, I start I actually start with uh, planning interviews like the fifth August, and the first thing is to get you know to get our committee chairman our new committee chairman on board, uh, get them up to speed. Um, and uh, the ball, I mean, that literally starts the ball rolling. And uh, so then we go, uh, we have a, uh, a planning retreat um, the third end in, in September. Our board of directors has a planning retreat the weekend after that. And we're on the road again. There we go. Uh, I mean, so the general committee's planning retreat, uh, I, I attend and participate in both of those retreats. Um, and uh, you know, we, we, we set our goals, we set our uh, priorities. Uh, w- w- what are we what are we looking at? Um, you know, we, we set our, um, our, our, our short sighted stuff, our, our long sighted stuff, and we're off and running. So when when does it happen? Literally, it starts for me August 5th. Basically, you're working on it all year long. You have like a little break right after. <laughs> yeah, a little breather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yep. Yep. And, and, and again, uh, you know, people say you, you do this, you do this for nothing. Uh, but it's not for nothing. Uh, like I said, I would, 
Uh, it's an honor, a privilege um, to be able to do this. Uh, and again, what what Cheyenne Frontier Days does for, and, and, and I'm not going to say uh, local stay. I, I'm going to say what Cheyenne Frontier Frontier Days does, and the brand, the recognition of that brand nationwide, is unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, you know, so uh, you know we we attend the national finals rodeo, um, and so we're invited to you know other committee function uh, like Houston's committee function, uh, San Antonio, what have you, and you know you walk into a room of people, and it is absolutely amazing that that Arrowhead brand. I mean, you're not five steps in a room. And I always tell our income incoming committee chairman, just listen what happens. You walk in there and inevitably somebody said, Cheyenne's here. <laughs> and and, and it's I, I mean, it, it is such a recognizable brand. And it like I said, it, it the the respect and the the aura that this this brand holds uh not only within the the ro rodeo world and the rodeo community but nationwide is is just unbelievable it's mind-blowing yeah that's something to really be proud yeah, of for I sure agree. um well i wanted to ask one more question before we wrap up and then we have one final question we ask all of our guests but um obviously 128 years it's been an evolution right but what are some of the key traditions that have remained unchanged that you've kept for CFD? Well, um, you know, I, I probably our, our premier tradition, uh, obviously, is Cheyenne Frontier Day started as a rodeo and with a rodeo. And so our rodeo, uh, our rodeo is pretty special. Um, again, uh, the size of that arena, uh, the events, the, the so on and so forth. But as you stated, you know, uh, obviously, we don't run Cheyenne Frontier Days like we did five years ago or three years ago and or whatever. So that is always a huge balance because you, you, you want to keep, you know, you want to keep those true traditions. And, and I say I say true traditions because sometimes everything becomes a tradition. And it's mm -hmm. it's like, well, that really isn't a tradition, you know. Uh, but again, uh, those those true traditions and, and the way I try to balance that is I try to I try to compare that tradition to the brand um, again is is that is that attached somehow some way to the brand and uh, it that that's that's how I kind of measure true true traditions uh, again you know uh, we're the the interesting part of this business and it, it's not just us but if you think about you take business and and we are truly a business um and so you know again uh, it's not it's not yesterday's rodeo it's not yesterday's entertainers it's not yesterday's um but you know we're landlocked on 30 on on 83 acres um we can't expand so what what goes on those 83 acres is pretty scrutinized because because it has to be but you know you uh, back to the business end um Show me another business or another company that has 10 days to make a year's worth of revenue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that and I mean, it's make it or break it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and we're not alone. You can, you know, uh, so like Houston's three weeks, San Antonio's, uh, you know, three weeks. We have 10 days. And uh, so you, there's not a, there's not a lot of wiggle room in there. It, it's got to happen and it's got to happen day in and day out for 10 days. Um, again, uh, as, as, you know, as we all live in this world, I mean, prices have gone up. Uh, we try to maintain our, our night show and rodeo tickets at a very fair, affordable price for everybody. Um, again, uh, the entertainment industry, uh, we, we try to, we try to book the, the, the best acts that we can. Uh, and, and, you know, this, this year, um, we, we, we went for some diversity, and, and I think it's going to be great. Uh, it, it's going to be exciting. I think we're going to have a great year. Uh, everything's shaping up and panning out that way. But again, um, it that 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 reverberates in my mind time and time again. Ten days, ten days to make this thing happen until a year from a year from now and the next ten days. So uh, 
if, 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 if you think about it too much, it's a little intimidating, yeah. but, uh, like I said, 128 years, we're, we, it, we're still we're doing rolling, it, so. <laughs> doing something right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, yep. That's true. Awesome. Well, thank you, John. Um, before you go, we just want to ask, um, our final question. Um, how do you stay authentic? Uh, personally or professionally or whatever you personal I'm here for it either yeah. one either one you know uh, uh, and, and not to use the the same response but our authenticity whether it's personal professional and or whatever um, we go back to that brand that's the authentic piece of all this that brand that brand uh, you know again our sponsors wear that brand our volunteers wear that brand our our leadership wears that brand and again that to me that 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 is what uh personally regrounds me and it's like you know we're wearing that brand we are here for that brand and and that brand makes this happen so again that authentic piece uh, I, i i couldn't think of anything more than the authenticity of that brand yeah that's awesome yeah i love that Well, thank you again, John. We appreciate you being here and talking about Shine Frontier Days. Yeah, thank you. Well, I want to thank I want to thank you. It's a pleasure to do this. Uh, you know, uh, again, I want to thank you for reaching out and 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 asking me to do this um, because uh, you know I, I I can't I can't talk about uh, I can't talk about the love and the the this brand and this event uh, enough. Uh, it's just, like I said, it's humbling. It's a pleasure to do it. Um, and, uh, uh, sp- sponsors, volunteers, uh, you know, we, we, we always want to thank them for what they do, uh, because they put this thing on. So again, uh, thanks for having me and it's a pleasure to be here. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Until next time. Stay authentic. Mm-hmm.